So here's the, uh, so here's the first question. Uh, this is from John Crockett. Is it true, uh, are the rumors true that you're part of a secret league of scientist detectives that include the Mythbusters guides, Sergey Brin, and the ghost of Albert Einstein that are secretly solving puzzles and mysteries? Is that true? It's true except for the ghost of Albert Einstein part. After you die, you don't participate in human affairs anymore, as far as we know. <laughs> there we go. So, so Albert Einstein ghosts not involved. Not involved. All right, so here's the next question. This actually kind of fades in a little bit. Oh, this is from this? Mr. Ross Mao's. Not as far as I know. Yeah, not as far, yeah, right. Okay, Mr. Ross Mao's ninth grade physical science class at Washington Technology Magnet School in St. Paul, Minnesota. So he asked, his class asked this, why do scientists get things wrong sometimes? And is that bad? No, it's not bad. Every, every scientific discovery, and you've heard this, every scientific discovery is a result of scientific misses or failures or misconceptions or things you didn't quite get right. And we say all the time, as far as we know, near as we can tell, approximately, to the accuracy possible, the following datum. So uh, it's not wrong, it's not bad to get things wrong. It's just a huge time saver if you can get things right. Sure. And as we say, this is paraphrasing Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, it's not what you don't know that gets you. It's what you're absolutely sure of. That's what goes wrong. When you're just absolutely certain of something and that assumption is just wrong, which is kind of, as you may know, how I've lived my life. But we, we hope that as time goes on, our scientific knowledge is enhanced and we make discoveries that change the world. I'll give you an example here, we're talking about space exploration. Nobody knows where gravity comes from. We understand gravity so well, we can land rovers on another planet billions of kilometers away and just get it just right there. But nobody exactly knows exactly where gravity comes from exactly. It's quite a weird thing. I'm pretty sure it's the force from Star Wars. Well. I'm pretty sure. It is a force. That's true. There you go. It could be. And you and I sitting here, we're in a force field. It's true. We're in a force field. Yep. It's a gravity force field. And that's all good. But actually, is yeah. there an exchange of gravitons? Are we influenced by gravity waves? No yeah. one's exactly sure exactly. Yeah. Very cool thing. Last question for yeah, you. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much for the time. Oh, it's great. I asked Dr. Kaku, uh, Dr. Michio Kaku, oh, Michio last Kaku, year. My buddy. Yeah. I've uh, met him. Okay. So, I asked, so I asked him in an interview. Who was cooler, physicists, scientists, or engineers? Now you straddle the fence. You're Bill Nye the science guy, but you're a mechanical engineer, so you can speak for both parties. Who's cooler, scientists or engineers? As we say, don't make me pick. I am a, I'm just some guy, but for whatever reason, I know more calculus than Isaac Newton did, which is just amazing, because I built on the work of other people. Scientists in general are exploring new parts of the world. Engineers make new things using scientific understanding. So it don't make me pick. And as far as Michio Kaku, I'd say engineers are cooler. I mean, I'm sorry. You were the coolest engineer I've ever met. I want to thank Bill Nye for his time. Again, really this is Mr. Guys. Bill Nye, the yeah. executive director of the Planetary Society. Learn more, planetary.org. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. It's great. It's great really interview. fun.